State of the franchise for the Cincinnati Bengals. If you are a Cincinnati Bengals fan, how do you feel about the direction that this team is heading going into the offseason? Now, the Bengals finished this season off with a record of 4-11-1. Now, obviously, at the start of the season, in the first half of the season, we saw just how great Joe Burrow is. Now, me personally, I think that Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert, despite only playing one year in the NFL, I think that they are already top 10 quarterbacks. Now, after Joe Burrow went down, with his season-ending injury against the Washington football team, my question now was, is Zach Taylor the right head coach for the Cincinnati Bengals? Now, I don't have a lot of confidence in Zach Taylor as the head coach of Cincinnati. But I do have more confidence in Zach Taylor now than what I did before the season. The reason for that is because Zach Taylor... Proving me that he can win games without Joe Burrow. Before Joe Burrow went down with his injury against Washington, I was thinking that Joe Burrow was really not only carrying the Cincinnati Bengals team, but he was also carrying the coaching staff. He was also carrying Zach Taylor. Cincinnati wasn't winning games because of Zach Taylor and Joe Burrow. I thought they were winning games simply because of Joe Burrow. So once Joe Burrow went down, I was asking myself the question, Okay, can Zach Taylor win at least one game without Joe Burrow? And the reason why I asked that is because when you look at some of the best coaches in the NFL, guys like Mike Tomlin, Sean Payton, and Andy Reid, all three of those coaches have proved that they can win without their starting quarterback. Meanwhile, you had Zach Taylor. I wanted to see what he could do without Joe Burrow. And he was able to win some games without Joe Burrow. As a matter of fact, Cincinnati won two games in a row. Until their last game against Baltimore, Week 17, which they lost 38-3. to But prior to that loss to Baltimore, they were on a two-game winning streak. Remember, they beat the Pittsburgh Steelers in one of the more surprising upsets of the NFL season on Monday night. The week after, they defeated Houston and looked really good offensively in that game. So, for me, yeah, I may not have a lot of confidence in Zach Taylor moving forward. But I have way more confidence in Zach Taylor now than what I did before the season. If you were to ask me, JT, how confident are you in Zach Taylor 1 through 5? I would have to say probably 3, okay? I'm not overly high on Zach Taylor, but I'm not incredibly low on Zach Taylor neither. I'm pretty much in the middle. So now it comes to what does Cincinnati need to do to improve going into the 2021 NFL season. Well, without a doubt, the first thing they have to do is they have to improve that defense. I was really disappointed in how Cincinnati's defensive line played this season because, remind you, if you guys have been subscribed to the channel prior to the start of the season, I felt like Cincinnati had the most underrated defensive line in the NFL. Now, you have Geno Atkins, who is rightly speculated that this is going to be his last year playing for the Cincinnati Bengals. You had DJ Reader, who was really good when he played for Cincinnati, when he was on the field. But other than that, the linebackers still are a big issue and a big problem that Cincinnati still has to address. I thought they fixed their linebacker issues last year in the NFL draft, but obviously they still have a lot more work that they need to do. I would like to see them improve the cornerback position. Now, when you look at the safety position, you don't even need to touch that, okay? You look at Von Bell, you look at Jesse Bates. They don't need to mess with the safety position. They, as a matter of fact, the Bengals have one of the best safety tandems in the NFL, okay? So you don't have to worry about the safety position. You're already set in stone for the next four or five years with Jesse Bates and Von Bell, but you do need to address the cornerback position, and you do definitely need to address the linebacker position because the Cincinnati Bengals have had one of the worst linebacker groups in the NFL for over the last three to four years. And it's a big reason why they struggle still to stop the run game. Now, on the offensive side of football, you need to give Joe Burrow more help on the off the line. Obviously, we saw Joe Burrow become one of the most sack quarterbacks, not only one of the most sack quarterbacks, but one of the most hit quarterbacks in the NFL during his time starting for Cincinnati at quarterback. So they need to improve the off the line. 
A lot of people think they're going to get Penny Sewell out of Oregon with their upcoming 2021 draft pick, which I think is pretty realistic. You do that, you improve the offensive line, you have two great tackles now, you have two great offensive tackles, now you have to worry about the guard position. And if they're able to improve the offensive line and free agency and then the draft, then Cincinnati is going to be a way better team next year and a really tough AFC North division. There were Bengals fans out there, and not a lot of you guys, but there were a couple of overly optimistic Bengals fans that believed that the Cincinnati Bengals could make it to the playoffs this year. And like I said, not a lot of you guys felt like that. About 20 to 15% of you guys out there, and you guys know who you are if you're watching this video, felt like the Bengals could be a playoff team. And I said, no way possible the Bengals make it to the playoffs. Because you're not good up front. If you want to win in the NFL and the vision like the AFC North, you have to have a good offensive line. Look at Baltimore. Look at Pittsburgh. Look at Cleveland. All those off the lines are pretty good, even though Pittsburgh's off the line and Baltimore's off the line isn't as good as what it should be right now because of injury concerns. But when they're fully healthy, they have really good off the lines. You saw how much money Cleveland invested in the, in the off the line last year in the offseason. For Cincinnati, they have to continue to invest in the off the line. Now, I don't know how much money they're going to put out in terms of improving and addressing the offensive line because the Cincinnati Bengals, like the LA Chargers, have one of the more cheap ownerships in the NFL, So, which means they don't really spend a lot of money heavily in free agency. So for Cincinnati, if they want to compete in the AFC North come next season, they have to address the offensive line because in the end of the day, the game is still won and lost in the trenches. Everybody makes this game about what teams have on the outside, who's playing quarterback, who's playing halfback, but none of that really matters if you don't have a good offensive line. And there were times this season I felt like Cincinnati lost him for the fact that the offensive line wasn't good. Like, there were several guys who I was asking, why is this guy still starting? Why? You're telling me that you don't have nobody better to replace some of the guys who were starting on Cincinnati's offensive line? So for Cincinnati, their biggest issue is going to be addressing the offensive line. Now, they don't have to worry about the half-half position. They don't have to worry about the wide receiver group, regardless of what happens with A.J. Green. I mean, at the end of the day, the Cincinnati Bengals are pretty much set at the skill position with guys that they currently have at their wide receiver position, such as Tyler Boyd. I like T. Higgins a lot. Like, they have a lot of young talent at the wide receiver position. I like Joe Mixon. So, they're pretty set there at the skill position. We already know that they're pretty much set at the quarterback position. Now, the only thing that they need to address is the off the line. For this team to be able to take the next step, they have to improve this off the line. They have to spend a lot of money and a lot of resources to improve the off the line. Don't just spend your first two picks in the NFL draft on the offensive lineman and expect that to fill your props because at the end of the day, you still have a lot of holes. So for Cincinnati overall, I think this franchise is heading in the right direction. I still don't know if they're going to be able to compete in the AFC North come next year. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't because Pittsburgh is going to be losing a lot of key players this offseason. They're not going to be able to retain everybody. We don't know what's going to happen with Baltimore if they're going to end up firing Greg Roman after the season ends. The Browns are in the playoffs for the first time in 18 years, but we don't know what's going to happen with Cleveland because Cleveland isn't really known for being a consistent franchise. So we don't really know. So heading forward, I'm really interested to see what Cincinnati does this offseason and how good they're going to be in 2021 when Joe Burrow returns. So if you are a Bengals fan, I think you have to look back at this season. You're not really all that blown away by what you saw because at the end of the day, we knew how good Joe Burrow was going to be. But aside from that, everybody pretty much saw the Cincinnati Bengals win in three to five games this year. So they finished the season now 4-11-1, even though nobody expected them to, you know, tie. Nobody expects that. But at the end of the day, if you look back at a couple of these Cincinnati Bengals games, some of these games were like one possession games that they ended up losing. Like you think about the Chargers game at the start of the season. That was a game that really Cincinnati should have won. Even that Miami Dolphins game, that New York Giants game could have went any direction. 
Okay, that New York Giants loss that they lost 19-17, that could have went in Cincinnati's favor. So really, Cincinnati could have been a 6-7 win team this year. You also look at that Indianapolis Colts game, which you lost 27-31 to because you didn't have a defense. Also, that first game that you ended up losing to the Cleveland Browns, 35-30, to I believe that was on Thursday Night Football. I think Baker Mayfield threw a game-winning touchdown, which ended up winning the game for Cleveland. So if you look at a couple of those one-game scores, if Cincinnati comes on the winning end of those games, they probably could be a 6-7 win team. So if you are a Bengals fan, I think that this franchise, it looks like it's heading in the right direction, but you have to wait until the all until free agency and the remainder of the offseason to see what this franchise does moving forward. But for right now, you should be feeling pretty optimistic about the Cincinnati Bengals going into the offseason.